In this video, we'll be going through question 13 of the 2023 Specimen Paper 2B for IGCSE Computer Science. This is the new 15 mark long question, which appears at the end of Paper 2, and we'll solve this sample question provided by Cambridge. If you'd like to try the question yourself before watching the video, the link to the specimen paper will be down in the description. With that being said, let's get started. The names of patients are stored in the one-dimensional 1D array patients of type string. A separate two-dimensional 2D array readings stores the latest data recorded about each patient. The array already contains the readings taken by a nurse for each patient. Temperature measured to one decimal place and pulse rate a whole number. Temperature readings should be in the range 31.6 to 37.2 inclusive. Pulse readings should be in the range 55 to 100 inclusive. The hospital number given to the patient is used for the index on both arrays. This is a value between 1 and 1000 inclusive. When the data for a patient is checked, a warning is given if any of the readings are out of range. If both readings are out of range, then a severe warning is given. We need to write a procedure using pseudocode or program code that meets the following requirements. Takes the hospital number as a parameter, checks if the number is valid, and outputs an error message and exits the procedure if this number is not valid. Otherwise, if the hospital number is valid, it'll output the patient's name, output normal readings if both the readings are within range, output warning if the name of the reading, for example pulse, if one reading is out of range, output severe warning and the names of the two readings, pulse and temperature, if both readings are out of range, then finally exit the procedure. To answer this question, we're going to use Python. However, in the exam, you are allowed to write pseudocode, a VB.NET program, or a Java program. The last part of the question says that we must add comments to explain how the code works, and we don't need to initialize the data in the arrays. To help us test and run the program, I've created a file called sampledata.py, which contains data for the two arrays being used in this program. The first array is a one-dimensional array containing a list of strings of patient names. The second array readings is a 2D array, where each entry into the array contains the patient's temperature and their pulse rate. The values in each of these arrays are linked by index. So for example, the first patient Joe has the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius and a pulse rate of 120. Then the second patient Sarah has a temperature of 37 and a pulse rate of 80 and so on. Let's get started with the main program. The main instructions for the program are over here. So we'll solve this program by completing each point. First things first, we need to write a procedure that takes the hospital number as a parameter. To write a procedure in Python, we use the def keyword, and we can call a procedure whatever we want. Let's call it check vitals. When defining a procedure or a function in Python, we use the brackets, and inside the brackets, we can put the parameter hospital number. Don't forget the colon, press enter, and you should be tabbed into the procedure. The next point says we need to check if the number is valid. They tell us in the question that a hospital number is valid if it is between 1 and 1000 inclusive. So we need to check if hospital number is between 1 and 1000. Let's do this using an if statement. To check if a number exists between two different numbers, we'll first check if it is greater than or equal to 1, use the AND operator, and then check if it is less than or equal to 1000. If this condition returns true, it means the hospital number is valid. So inside the if statement, we'll write code assuming the hospital number is valid. If this condition returns false, it means the hospital number is either less than one or it is greater than 1000. So we can check the third point, which says to output an error message and exit the procedure if the number is not valid. Let's use an else statement and we'll output an error message saying that this is an invalid hospital number. This code will be at the end of the procedure, meaning that it'll exit if this print statement is called. The next point says, if the hospital number is valid, we need to complete these next few points. The first thing to do is to output the patient's name. We'll select the patient's name from the patient array using the hospital number as an index. Let's create a variable called patient name and we'll assign it to the patient array, selecting at position of hospital number minus one. The reason we need to do minus one is because array indexes in Python start at zero and we're choosing hospital numbers that start at 1. So if we call this function entering the parameter 1, we need to return the first value of the patient array, which is going to be at position 0. So 1 minus 1 will give us 0. Then we'll print out the patient name on the next line. The next few points all relate to the readings of the patient. We need to do a number of checks, 
and output a message based on the values of those readings. First, we'll check if the readings are within range, then we'll output normal readings. If one of the readings is out of range, we'll output a warning with that specific reading. Otherwise, if both the readings are out of range, we'll output both pulse and temperature with severe warning. The first thing we need to do is access the temperature and pulse rate of the current patient. These values are stored in the readings 2D array, where every element is linked to a patient based upon the index. This means we can select the readings by creating a variable called patient readings and selecting the readings array at the position of hospital number minus one, just as we did with the patient name. And this will contain a one dimensional array containing the patient's temperature and their pulse. Let's store these values in separate variables. We'll first create a variable called temperature and we'll select the patient readings at the position of zero, since the temperature is always held in the first position as given to us by the instructions. The pulse rate is held at patient readings at position of one. The patient readings variable is not entirely necessary since we're only going to be working with temperature and pulse as individual values. For this reason, we can take the value of patient readings and we can replace patient readings on line 10 with this value and replace patient readings on line 11 with that value and fully remove line nine. We now have code which selects a value from readings using two indices. The first index relates to the current patient and the second index relates to the temperature. We do the same thing for pulse where the second index relates to the pulse. We can now use these variables in if statements checking if they're normal, if there is a warning or if there is a severe warning. When reading through the specifications, you may notice that we're going to be doing quite a lot of conditions. These conditions are all to do with checking if temperature and pulse is within the range. The ranges they're speaking about are given to us earlier in the question when they say that temperature readings should be in the range 31.6 to 37.2 and pulse readings within the range 55 to 100. Since these are data values that aren't going to change, we'll store them as constants at the beginning of our program. Let's create the constant temp low, which is going to store the lower boundary of the temperature reading. In this case, it will be 31.6. We'll do the same for temp high, which is going to be the upper boundary, 37.2. Let's create the constant pulse low to store the lower boundary of the pulse reading, which should be 55, and pulse high to store the upper boundary, which will be 100. Let's start with the first point, which is going to be checking if the readings are both within the range. First, we'll check if the temperature is within this range. We can do this using an if statement in a similar way we checked if hospital number is within the range. We'll say if temperature is greater than or equal to temp low and if temperature is less than or equal to temp high. If this condition is true, it means that the temperature is within the range. We also want to check if the pulse is within the range, so we'll do the same thing using the AND Boolean operator to ensure that both conditions are the same. Let's write the condition pulse greater than or equal to pulse low and pulse less than or equal to pulse high. This if statement is quite long and it starts to become a bit unreadable when it goes on to the next line. You may notice from the specifications that we're going to be rewriting these conditions several times, checking if they are within the range or if they're outside the range. To avoid rewriting long lines of code, and making the code very unreadable, we're going to create separate functions which will validate the temperature and will validate the pulse. Then we'll be able to call these functions instead of having to write out these long lines of code every time we want to check if the temperature and the pulse is within the range. So above our first procedure, let's create a function called temperature in range, and we'll pass in the parameter temperature. Inside this function, we want to determine if the temperature is within the range. We can do this using this condition over here. Let's copy this and paste this into an if statement in our function. If the statement is true, we can return true. If the statement is false, we'll return false. However, this function is a good example of not writing smart code. In the if statement, this condition is going to evaluate to either true or false. If it evaluates to true, we're returning the value true. Otherwise, if it evaluates to false, we're returning the value false. With conditions, we can assign these to variables. For example, we can create a variable called check and assign it this condition. Check will then either be true or false when the condition is evaluated. 
then instead of doing this entire if else chain, we can simply just return check. The final change we can make to this is to completely remove the check variable altogether. We can take this condition and simply return it, removing the use of the check variable. And this is a good example of a smart validation function. Now in the if statement, we don't need to do this check. Instead, we can simply call the function temperature in range, passing in the parameter temperature. Let's do the same for checking if the pulse is within range. We'll create a function called pulse in range, taking in the parameter pulse. Inside the function, we'll do exactly the same as we did with the temperature in range function. We'll copy the condition, checking if the pulse is within range, and we'll return that condition. Then we can simply replace the condition in the if statement with the function call passing pulse as a parameter. This makes our if statements much more readable and means we won't need to rewrite long lines of code. Of course, if it makes more sense for you to do the conditions manually every time, then you can absolutely do that. However, if you intend on doing programming further, this is a good habit to get into. Let's continue with the solution. We were checking if both temperature and pulse is within range. If so, we need to output normal readings. So inside the if statement, we'll print out normal readings. The next point is to output warning and the name of the reading. For example, pulse, if one reading is out of range. Let's extend this if statement by adding an elif. And for this point, we want to break it up into two separate conditions. We first want to check if only temperature is in range and pulse is out of range. Then we want to do the opposite, checking if only pulse is in range and temperature is out of range. Let's do the first condition, which is checking if temperature is in range and if the pulse is not in range. The way we can do this is by using the not boolean operator, which will invert the return value of this function. You can see how writing these functions makes it very easy, since you can read this in English. If the temperature is in range and the pulse is not in range. If that is the case, we need to print out that there is a warning for the pulse. The second half of this point is to do the opposite, to check if the temperature is not in range and the pulse is in range. Again, reading this entire condition in English, we would say if the temperature is not in range and the pulse is in range. This means we want to print a warning for the temperature. The next point says to output a severe warning and the names of two readings, pulse and temperature, if both readings are out of range. In this if elif chain, we are validating every combination of temperature and pulse. We first checked if both of them are valid. Then we checked if either one of them are valid. This means that if all of these conditions are false, the only other case is if both are out of range. So we can print out severe warning, making sure to include the names of the two readings, pulse and temperature. The last point says to exit the procedure. Once we reach the end of this if elif chain, it will exit the procedure. So that completes the specifications of the program. The last point is to add comments to explain how your code works. When adding comments, we don't want to explain every single line. Instead, we just want to explain the purpose of blocks of code. So let's start off with the first if statement, where we'll write the comment, check hospital number is valid. Inside the if statements, we're selecting the patient name. So let's write a comment saying that we're selecting the name. These two lines are selecting the patient's readings from the array. So let's write a comment. The first if statement is checking if the patient's readings are within range. The second condition is checking if the temperature is in range and the pulse is out of range. The next condition is checking if temperature is out of range. And the final condition checks if both are out of range. The last thing to comment on is going to be the functions that we wrote. The first function returns true if the temperature is in range. And the second function returns true if the pulse is in range. This completes the specifications and this is all you would need to get full marks for the exam. However, since we have access to a compiler, Let's write some test code to show how this program works. At the bottom of the program, after all of the functions and procedures, we'll first ask the user to enter a number, then we'll call the procedure check vitals with number as the argument. Let's run the program and we'll enter one as the first number. The output given is name of the patient Joe and the warning as pulse. Let's try again, this time entering two, and we get the patient Sarah with normal readings. I've modified the program to include a for loop, which iterates through all of the patients and calls the check vitals for each patient number. Let's run the program again, and we can see each patient and the status of their readings outputs on each new line. 
Just remember, you don't need to do the step in the exam. You only need to follow the specifications as given in the question. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to download the code, this replit will be linked in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.